massive offshore earthquake. I'm Stephanie Rochon. And I'm Bill Fitzgerald. The 8.2 magnitude quake hit off the coast just a few hours ago. And since then, there have been at least nine significant aftershocks, including one with a magnitude of 6.2. There are reports of traffic jams in coastal communities as people try to heed the government's call to move inland. A tsunami warning is also in effect and will be for the next six hours. There have been no reports, however, of any injuries or deaths. We'll continue to follow this breaking story on the air and online at WTBR.com. A police officer is recovering tonight after a crash this afternoon in Chesterfield. The wreck happened just after 4.30 on Hull Street near Skin Quarter Road. Chelsea Rarick is live outside our West Broad Street studio to tell us what happened. And Chelsea, how's that officer doing? Well, Steph, I'm told that that officer is going to be okay. He's recovering at Chippenham Hospital. Now, as for the driver who hit the officer, I'm told he was taken to VCU, VCU Medical Center, but his condition right now is unknown. If the officer was dirty, he should have died. There's a lot of dirty police officers out there. If he was a good one, God bless him. But if he was a dirty officer, he should have died. Police say around 4.30 p.m., a Chesterfield police officer makes a routine traffic stop in the 18,000 block of Hull Street Road. He pulls the car over on the side. And that's when police say another car slams into the patrol car, causing it to hit this Jeep. We think that the uh, driver may have been fatigued and not realized he was approaching the officer that quickly and by the rear end. The woman who was initially pulled over was not injured. We're told the officer was taken to HCA Chippenham Hospital and is expected to be okay. He had uh, back injuries, neck injuries, and some soreness in his back, but he's talking and fine at the hospital. The person who hit the patrol car was taken to VCU Medical Center. If he was like one of the, all the dirty police out there where well, he should right have been now, killed. His condition is unknown. With bloody on the face and airbag must have messed him up. The accident had traffic. Y'all going down, you dirty cops, one at a time. You're going to learn to know how to treat people. For drivers out on the road to always pay extra close attention behind the wheel, especially if an officer is pulled off to the side. What we'd like is for the uh, citizens to move over if they can and give a buffer zone for the officers got the car stopped on the side of the road. Now, as for charges, police tell me that it's still too early to tell, but we will, of course, continue to follow this story. Reporting live tonight, Chelsea Ware, CBS 6 News. Thank you, Chelsea. New at 11 tonight, a memorial for Richmond music legend Dave Brocky. Fans gathered at the National in Richmond. The Guar frontman was found dead on a sofa in his North Richmond home March 23rd. A roommate found the 50-year-old and called for help. The state medical examiner is still working, He's working right now to determine the exact cause of death. New at 11, more than $19,000 has been raised to help a man whose legs were amputated after an accident last month in Chesterfield. Brad Hughes stopped to help an accident victim on the side of the road during a snowstorm. Police say he was hit by another car and his legs had to be amputated. According to his fundraising account online, 264 people have helped raise enough money to almost reach the $20,000 goal. We're told Hughes is still in the hospital recovering. The money raised will help pay for his medical bills. A nice sunny day today. Hopefully we're hitting a patch of nice solid spring weather. We'd like to see this stretch for a while, Zach. It will continue. We'll have a chance for some showers in there, but that's part of spring as well. The temperatures, though, they're going to stay very comfortable. Here are your highs from today. The actual high, 72 in Richmond, 81 over in Farmville, 79 down in South Hill. We'll see warmer temperatures across the area. It's about everywhere as we get into tomorrow. We have clear skies right now. Had a lot of sunshine out there for today. A lot more cloud cover around over the next several days as more energy heads our direction. Of a complex uh, pattern out to our west. We'll see this cold front move in as we get into tomorrow. It really won't affect us too much, but it's cold the out there. The homeless Slightly are sleeping in the weather. park. They don't have North anywhere North to stay, and it is still damp and cool. Nine degrees, very light easterly wind. We'll talk about those rain chances in the forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Zach. Richmond police are asking for help to try and solve a triple shooting. It happened around 11.15 last night in the 2000 block of Dinwiddie Avenue. Police say 34-year-old Kiari Edwards was shot and killed. The two other victims are expected to recover. Police do not think this was a random shooting. 
It's a story we've been investigating for more than a year in case after case. Two, three, two, 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 the zip code. Of homes. And now for the first time, the person brought in to fix some of those problems at Richmond's Department of Social Services answers tough questions from CBS 6. Melissa Hipplett is live in Richmond with that story tonight. Melissa? Janine Harper has a very significant history working to improve the welfare of children in this city. She says there's a new sense of urgency here at DSX. This one, she's only a few hours old. I was feeding her. Adrian Sidnor still dreams about her 10-month-old granddaughter, Gianna, who died in November of last year. Somebody needs to be held responsible for Gigi's death. All she wants is closure, but the investigation is still open. Look at my case. See if you can rest they don't know what they're doing. Losers running at social services. services because she was worried about little Gigi's living. They're losers. Sidnor believes if DSS they need to be sued, action, her granddaughter would still be alive. Somebody needs to be held accountable. Five months later, Sidnor waits for answers as new leaders try to improve DSS. You learn from your mistakes, and you teach other people how not to make mistakes. Janine Harper is now one of the people tasked with helping fix DSS. She's the head of Stop Child Abuse Now, known as SCAN. I obviously have a strong emphasis on the well-being and safety of children. I mean, that's why I'm at SCAN. Harper just started this week. SCAN is loaning her to DSS for six months. Over the years, you must have seen some red flags pop up with regards to DSS. We certainly have been aware through the services that we offer that there have been times when we believe that um, that there may be a better outcome for children than, than what was going on. Harper knows there is plenty of work to do, but she says the city's most vulnerable are in competent hands. Would you say that children in this city today are safer than they were two months ago? So absolutely, no. Absolutely, there's an urgency every day no. um, to, to looking at what can we do to make sure that no child is hurt. That sense of urgency is something Sidnor says she never felt DSS had for her beloved Gigi. And she hopes new leaders like Harper will always remember that. You have to face the past to move forward to the future. No charges have been filed in the Sidnor case. Police tell me they are still waiting for the results from the toxicology report. Reporting live in Richmond tonight, Melissa Hippolyte, CBS 6. Thank you, Melissa. A source tells CBS 6 News Richmond school spokesperson Felicia Cosby is on administrative leave for serving alcohol to an adult intern. We're told the incident happened in Cosby's office at City Hall, and that office is considered school property and thus falls under the drug and alcohol-free policy. We tried to reach Cosby for comment. Her mother answered and declined an interview. The disappearance of Relisha Rudd has been shrouded in mystery now for more than a month. When the eight-year-old first vanished, D.C. police issued an Amber Alert. But with Richmond just miles away from the area she was last seen, we wanted to know why Virginia State Police did not issue an Amber Alert as well. Lorenzo Hall went to get answers tonight, so... Steph and Bill, at one time, Richmond and State Police told Because the baby was black, Rudd that's why... With her alleged kidnapper, Khalid, the losers to know why an Amber Alert made the same thing Khalid. happen to their State children. State Person Corinne Geller tells me they have been in touch with Metro Police in D.C. during the entire course of this investigation and have passed on all information to troopers and local law enforcement across the Commonwealth. Geller says they also reached out to Metro Police to offer any assistance, including the activation of a Virginia Amber Alert. However, Geller says the alert was never activated because they did not get a request from Metro Police. At the outset of this search, it was believed... The losers, the like I said, they need to die one, one by one. reports from other media outlets along the East Coast, law enforcement in their states didn't get a request to activate an Amber Alert either, even though Metro Police claim they sent out a request to several states. Well, tonight, investigators in D.C. are still searching for Relisha. Tatum, you may recall, was found dead from what appears to be suicide in a D.C. park yesterday afternoon. I'm Lorenzo Hall for CBS 6 News. Steph? Thanks, Lorenzo. New at 11, the 16-year-old at the center of a high school sex scandal in Virginia, Virginia Beach is talking about the case. He asked that his name not be used in this report. He was 15 last March when he says 23-year-old Patience Perez first approached him, giving him her phone number and email. White girl she wanted the brother, loser. The teen says his she wanted to lay the young brother. Hang her. She white. They ain't going to give her no time. After Perez pled guilty to indecent liberty charges, 
A judge in Norfolk gave her a suspended jail sentence, and a bench judge deferred sentencing for a year, something the teen says is upsetting to him. If it was a dude, if it was an older man and a younger female about my age, if he I was, was white, for the rest of his life, for the rest of his life. The teen and his mother have started a petition demanding Virginia judges give harsher punishments for crimes like this. The uh, judges Florida are losers. Medicaid in Virginia as part of the next two-year budget. Governor McAuliffe signed a bill today that continues to fund the government to the end of this fiscal year, that is July 1st. McAuliffe praised the so-called caboose budget bill as a bipartisan effort. He says the bill today shows obstacles can be overcome. It looked like a scene from a horror movie. What lawyers are saying about a woman accused of murder by stiletto heel. The cousin of former Virginia Tech quarterback Michael Vick caught in the crossfire. He says she's lucky to be alive after shots were fired into her car. But was she the target? What do you see wrong with this snapshot? Parents love putting pictures of their children on Facebook, but one mom's post might have saved her child from going blind. A school bus driver busted the reason parents say he never should have been behind the wheel, and we found out something similar could happen here. While saving you money at the store, the best times to buy everything from groceries to clothes and new cars. Temperatures tight.